kidney disease is a profound burden. Some statistics. 850 million people worldwide have kidney disease. 40 million people in the U.S. have abnormal kidney function. 650,000 Americans have end-stage renal disease and are on dialysis or have received a kidney transplant. 100,000 Americans begin dialysis each year and one in five will die within a year. 100,000 Americans are waiting for a kidney transplant. The burden of kidney disease and its management has skyrocketed such that the cost of kidney care in the United States to Medicare is about hundred and fourteen billion dollars per year which is approximately twenty percent of the traditional Medicare budget. Current clinical approaches to treat patients with end-stage renal disease include hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, and kidney transplantation. However, dialysis is not an optimal therapy since patients suffer medically and emotionally from a treatment that fundamentally takes over their lives and provides them little freedom to think of anything else. Dialysis has other technical shortcomings in that it requires a complex water purification infrastructure. For example, in the US, approximately 6.2 billion gallons of water are used per year for hemodialysis, which is the estimated amount of water needed to feed the country's entire livestock for a year. Furthermore, there is also a large carbon footprint generated by the dialysis industry. Despite these shortcomings, there has been little scientific advance in the dialysis space, with innovation in dialysis therapy and kidney replacement therapy remaining essentially stagnant. Here we describe the design and operation of a new artificial kidney technology that is being spearheaded by U.S. Kidney Research Corporation, which mimics the function of the kidney and is not based on dialysis. We have developed a portable prototype which in animal studies has created the world's first artificial urine that does not utilize dialysis. Our portable device will ultimately allow patients to treat themselves at work or at night instead of being dialyzed. Importantly, using our new technology, we are also working on the goal of creating a completely implantable artificial kidney. Our device incorporates several patented technical advances that we have made over the past five years in membrane and an electrolyte transport technology and represents a paradigm shift in the field of renal replacement therapy that is comparable to the development of dialysis as a therapeutic modality over 70 years ago. One of the highlights that our team is most proud of is that GE named our technology one of the five coolest things on earth in 2020. In thinking about how to approach the problem of developing an artificial kidney, we took an important lesson from the Wright brothers in their approach to designing a controlled, powered flying machine. Although others had based their designs on emulating the beating of bird's wings, the Wright brothers chose not to use a biological-based approach by simulating wing function exactly. Instead, they worked out the key engineering principles that a flying machine must have and simulated the functionality of a flying bird using man-made materials. Analogously, because of the known difficulties and complexities in utilizing either stem cells or cells derived from the kidney in developing an artificial kidney, we chose to only utilize man-made materials in our device similar to the rights. The kidney performs numerous functions in order to keep our blood chemistry constant. We asked ourselves, what are the minimum essential functions the kidney performs that must be incorporated into a successful and safe artificial kidney device. What I will detail now are the six key properties we maintain an artificial kidney must possess. Ultrafiltration. An artificial kidney device needs to generate an ultrafiltrate of blood while preventing the filtration of cells and protein. Urea and glucose. The device must allow the excretion of urea, but not the excretion of glucose. Electrolytes. The device needs to transport electrolytes correctly into the synthetic urine to maintain the chemistry of blood constant despite changes in dietary intake. Water. The amount of synthetic urine created by the device needs to approximate the patient's daily water intake. Middle molecules. 
toxic middle molecules should be excreted appropriately into the synthetic urine. Waterless and dialysis free. In designing an implantable artificial kidney, purified water, dialysis solutions, and a dialyzer cannot be used and must be replaced by a different technology. It becomes immediately apparent that many different complex functions must be incorporated into an artificial kidney device. In this regard, creating an artificial kidney is much more complicated than designing an artificial heart or pancreas where one is essentially replicating only a single organ function. As an example, in the case of the heart, one needs to design an efficient pump. And in the case of the pancreas, the device needs to mediate insulin secretion in response to changes in blood glucose concentration. In this sense, designing an artificial kidney represents a much more difficult challenge. Our current device consists of four separate components, an ultrafiltration module, a nanofiltration module, electrodeionization modules, and a reverse osmosis module. The ultrafiltration module can be thought of as a sophisticated filter that prevents the filtration of blood cells and proteins while efficiently filtering water, urea, and electrolytes. The nanofiltration module is also a filter, but has the property of preventing the filtration of glucose and allowing the permeation of urea, electrolytes, and water. Electrodeionization modules are components in the device that perform the key electrolyte transporting functions of the artificial kidney. For those not familiar, these devices use an electric current to transport specific electrolytes from one solution to another. A reverse osmosis module is part of the device that transports water between the filtered blood and the synthetic urine stream so that the synthetic urine volume approximates the patient's water intake. Finally, we have built into the device the capability of dynamic feedback control. Like a home thermostat, which ensures that the functions of the various modules are not fixed and constant, but can change to compensate for alterations in dietary food and water intake. $3.2 million has gone into the development of our current prototype. You are looking at the inner components of the first artificial kidney device, which mimics the function of the kidney that is not based on dialysis. To orient you, this is the ultrafiltration module, this is the nanofiltration module. These two devices are the electrodeionization units. This module is the reverse osmosis module. And blood comes into the device through this red tube, leaves the device through this blue tube, and synthetic urine comes out this tube into the urine bag. This visual is an example of the capability of the device to control one of the major electrolytes in blood, the potassium concentration. Potassium is a very important electrolyte in blood that any artificial kidney device must control within narrow limits, or patients can die because of an abnormal heart rhythm. In this experiment, the potassium was increased significantly from baseline, and the device nicely returned the potassium to normal. Our technology, if developed commercially, has several advantages for patients, payers, and providers of renal replacement therapy. Since the use of our portable device occurs at night or during the day, at home or at work, patients will no longer need to go to a dialysis clinic and will have increased mobility and the ability to travel more easily and work longer hours. Given the potential for longer treatment times, the patient's diet and fluid intake could be potentially liberalized. The dynamic feedback control that will be incorporated into the device will provide instant treatment data to the patients and their caregivers, providing more information for accurate therapy compared to current dialysis procedures. In its ultimately implantable format, patients will be entirely mobile and not require either a dialysis access or anti-rejection medications. Given the shortage of native kidneys for transplantation, patients who have dreamt for years of getting off dialysis will now be given the opportunity. For payers, with an estimated cost of $30,000 to $50,000 per device, depending on the specific configuration, there is predicted to be a substantial cost saving to Medicare. For providers, 
Our technology could save additional millions of dollars by eliminating the need for water purification systems, dialysate solutions, and dialyzers. Eliminating the need for billions of gallons of water yearly will be better for the environment, as will getting rid of the carbon footprint associated with generating purified water, manufacturing dialysate solutions, and manufacturing dialyzers. There are several markets for our technology. I would like to briefly describe these markets and our goals for the next few years. Our portable device is of the size of a backpack. This device will significantly impact the home treatment market and decrease the reliance on outpatient clinics. Patients will ultimately be able to use the portable device either at work or at night while sleeping. In two years' time, we hope to have our prototype ready for clinical trials. We have budgeted $9 million to finalize our portable prototype. Ultimately, our technology can be used in a fully implantable miniaturized artificial kidney. This will have a significant impact on the current donor organ shortage problem. We estimate that our implantable device will be ready for clinical testing in five years. In achieving these goals, we will also be completing software validation and performing biocompatibility and toxicity testing of the components in our portable and ultimately implantable devices. In closing, our technology represents the first completely new blood purification methodology that can realistically replace dialysis and become the next evolution of renal replacement therapy. Each of the components in our device performs key functions that simulate the kidney's filtration and transport properties. To save lives, improve the quality of life of patients on dialysis, and solve the kidney organ shortage problem, we have created a novel technology that will lead to the ultimate development of a truly artificial kidney to replace dialysis and native kidney transplantation. Finally, in addition to these markets, we plan to utilize our technology to create devices that can regenerate peritoneal and hemodialysis solutions for patients that continue to use these modalities, thereby significantly decreasing the amount of solutions needed by dialysis providers that represents a significant cost savings. Unlike sorbent technology, which others are using to accomplish similar goals, our devices will not need to be replaced daily. Our accomplishments thus far are an excellent example of a successful private-public partnership. My partners in this enterprise are Roland Ludlow, the CEO of U.S. Kidney Research Corporation, and Jamie Hestigan, who is part of our research team at the University of Arkansas. In closing, on behalf of my colleagues, I would like to deeply thank KidneyX for their support of our efforts in creating the new technology that I have described today.